On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to look at how you can set up your own completely custom website on the Raspberry Pi with just a single line of code. Getting started with web hosting can be a pretty daunting task, especially if you're just looking to host a basic personal site without committing to a paid web hosting service. While this can be pretty complicated to set up by yourself, we're going to take a look at a tool called Dataplicity, which manages all the grunt work of setting up a personal web server. To follow along with this tutorial, all you're going to need is a Raspberry Pi with the Raspbian operating system installed, and also a computer with access to the internet. To begin, I'm going to show you how we can use Dataplicity to host our own custom website on the Raspberry Pi, and for this demonstration, we're going to be reviving a wonderful website called Cat Fancy that sadly no longer exists. So I've already downloaded a copy locally to my computer, which I've pulled from the Wayback Machine. But if you want to host your own custom website, like a blog page or something like that, you're going to need to have those files already prepared and downloaded for this demonstration. So once you have these files ready, we can go ahead and go back to the Dataplicity website, which you can find at dataplicity.com. And we're gonna get started with setting up our web server. So as you can see from their documentation, there's basically only two steps that we're gonna need in order to get this up and running. And we're gonna start by first registering an account with Dataplicity by entering our email. So for this video, I'm just gonna use a temporary email since I don't want to show that on camera. And after you've registered an account, we should be pretty much good to go. And we can just go ahead and copy this line of code that they provide us here, which should let us set up our Raspberry Pi to uniquely authenticate with the Dataplicity servers. So that way it knows which Raspberry Pi is accessing what by using um, the account that we just created. So if you're looking to actually use Dataplicity, you're gonna to want to use a legitimate email rather than something random like I did here. So that way you can sign in either through their web application, which you can access through the browser, or even their mobile app, which you can use on your phone. So that way you can control your Raspberry Pi remote. So now that we're all set up, the next step is just open up a terminal on our Raspberry Pi and just paste this line of script that they provided us here. Now, I already have my Raspberry Pi set up on my local network, communicating over SSH, which is basically a protocol that allows me to remotely log in and access my Raspberry Pi. So if you don't already have your Raspberry Pi set up with either the Raspbian operating system or with a headless setup that allows you to remotely log in via SSH, I can show you how to do this in upcoming videos, or you can also just use the default Raspbian setup, which you can attach peripherals like a screen, keyboard, and mouse to. So that way you can do the same thing with just a little less setup. So since I have my Raspberry Pi on my local network, I can just SSH into it by doing SSH Pi at 192.168.0.99, which is its local IP address that I determined ahead of time. And I can just log in with the default password, which should be Raspberry. So as you can see, I used SSH to remotely log into my Raspberry Pi, and now I have access to the Raspberry Pi's terminal. So again, if you don't have a headless Raspberry Pi set up with SSH, you can also just use the Raspbian operating system with just like a screen and a few other peripherals. And again, I will show you how to do this in upcoming videos. So now that we're logged into the Raspberry Pi, I can just paste the line of code that we copied from the website. And now I can just run this. So it should start installing all of the dependencies we need to get Dataplicity up and running and also handle all of the complicated stuff we would otherwise have to do by hand, like port forwarding and a bunch of other sketchy stuff we would have to do through our router. So of course, one of the benefits to using Dataplicity is it handles all of this for us and just directly routes the website that we're gonna be hosting on our Raspberry Pi to something that's already front facing on the internet using their services. So now that Dataplicity has installed on the Raspberry Pi, we should be good to go and I can head back over to the Dataplicity website to finish the configuration. So after we've run this little script here, I can just click done. And this should take us to a website where it's basically just a pretty simple terminal interface, similar to something you would see like the one here. And by default, it logs us in as the Dataplicity user on our Raspberry Pi. Now, if we want to actually get access to some lower level stuff like privileges we would need to install packages, we're gonna to want to switch back over to the Pi user since we won't be able to do that through Dataplicity. So I can do that just by switching user with SU Pi for switch user and authenticate our user by typing the default password, which should just be Raspberry. Great, so now we've switched back over to the Pi user and we should be good to go. 
So we already have Dataplicity set up completely for remote access. So that means if you have the mobile app downloaded on your phone, you can use the credentials you use to sign up, which should be your email address, and also a password that you can create after doing some further verification under your Dataplicity profile. But if you're accessing your Raspberry Pi outside of your local network, you can basically just log in via the Dataplicity website or again, the mobile app, and you'll have remote access to completely do remote administration stuff through this web interface terminal that we have here. But since we want to set up a custom website to be running on our Raspberry Pi, this requires a little more configuration that we're gonna look into now. We'll first start by installing the actual web server infrastructure that's going to allow us to host our website and also provide us other configuration options like if we want to later plug in PHP or even a MySQL database or something similar to that. So the web server I'm gonna be taking a look at today is called Nginx, which is just one of my favorites and one that I'm most familiar with for setting up web servers. So we can install this by running sudo apt install Nginx. And this should install all of the dependencies necessary in order to get our website up and running. So now that Nginx has finished installing, as you can see here, I can go ahead and enable the option on Dataplicity in order to get our website to actually start running through their services. So if you look at this sidebar that they have over here, there's a feature called the wormhole, which basically handles all of the routing necessary in order to get this website up and running and basically accessible directly through the internet. So traditionally, you would have to do this by doing port forwarding on your router and a whole bunch of other configurations to make sure that not only is your website and local network safe, but also to actually handle getting the website up and running, which is a lot of unnecessary work. So just by enabling this feature, Dataplicity should automatically detect whether or not a website is running on the Raspberry Pi, which is via port 443 or port 80, and it should tether this to a Dataplicity domain, which we can access through here. So by default, Nginx should start a default configuration page after you've installed the web server that we should be able to access and see on this domain we provided here. So if I click on this and open it in a new tab, you can see that Nginx has already started running and has this default configuration page that I mentioned before already set up. Now, since we want something a little more fancy, I'm gonna show you how we can replace this with the Cat Fancy webpage, so that way we have something a little more customized to our taste. Heading back over to the Dataplicity site, I'm gonna start by uploading those Cat Fancy files that I downloaded earlier from my local computer. And I'm actually gonna do this on my local network since that's most convenient, and I have the files already on my computer. Now, if you're doing this remotely and want to set up your own website without having access to the files on your local network, you can also do this with something like wget in order to download files from the internet or git if you want to access files from a repository. Now, since I have it on my local network, it would be most convenient to use a protocol like secure copy protocol in order to upload those cat fancy files directly to my Raspberry Pi on my local network. So I can do this just by opening up a new tab on my terminal and just using SCP for secure copy protocol, followed by the files that I want to upload and basically the same syntax that I used for SSH. So I can do SCP, um, the local file, which I believe should be downloaded as index.html. And then I can just use the same syntax from SSH, which should be pi at 192.168.0.99, followed by where I want it to copy in the directory structure of the Raspberry Pi. So I can do slash home, slash pi, and then I'm gonna do slash web. So I can just go ahead and authenticate our pi user. And as you can see, it failed since I don't actually have this directory set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this slash web here and retype in the password and we should be good to go. So sweet, it should have copied this to my Raspberry Pi. And if I head back over to our Dataplicity session and type ls under um, the Pi user, we should be able to see, oops, I'm gonna first change into slash home slash Pi. And we should see that index.html has popped up. Now the last step is just upload the other files for the website, which I should have downloaded under cat fancy. So I can check this just by quickly running ls rep cats. And you can see here we have this folder, which is cat fancy files that I've downloaded. And I can also copy this to our Raspberry Pi by similarly using SCP, except this time to copy a whole directory. So I can just run SCP tech R for recursive followed by the location of the files. So that would be just cat fancy files. 
and then the location of our Raspberry Pi, which is just pi at 192.168.0.99 slash home slash pi. And it looks like I mistyped cat fancy files, so I can just fix that real quick. And now everything should be copied over to our Raspberry Pi. So if I go ahead and go back to the Dataplicity website, I can confirm this by typing ls. And you can see that we now have the directory cat fancy files and also the index.html page, which should be the main page that we're trying to host. So now that we have this set up, the next step is to point Nginx to where this file is located so that way it knows what to serve to our web server. So I can do this just by editing a very simple configuration page on Dataplicity, which I can find just by typing cd for change directory slash etc slash Nginx. So this should take us to the folder where the configuration files for Nginx are located, and that way we can edit the file that's necessary in order to tell Nginx to start hosting our web page. So once we're under slash etc slash nginx, I can just type ls to get a gauge of what files are under this folder. And you can see we have a whole bunch of different configuration files and folders that are located here. So I wanna change over to the sites available folder, which should contain all of the configuration stuff necessary to get our website up and running. So I can type cd sites available, ls. And you can see there's a single file under this folder, which is called default. So we're gonna to want to edit this. And for that, I'm gonna use the nano editor, which I can access just by typing sudo nano default. And this should allow us to edit the default file. Now, if you wanted to configure your web server to run with something like PHP or even tether a SQL database to your website, you can do this all from this configuration file that we have here. But I'm gonna go into more detail on web hosting in upcoming episodes since that's a bit extensive for this video. So just scrolling down, we should be looking for this line here that says root followed by a directory. So we're gonna want to swap out where it looks for the root of our website files. And we're gonna do this just by using the directory that we copied our files to, which if you remember is just at slash home slash pi. So I can just change that out by typing root slash home slash pi followed by another slash. And this should tell Dataplicity to basically look under the home slash pi directory for any file that's named index, index.html, or some other variant of that. So I can save this file in nano just by doing control O for output, and then control X to exit this file after I've saved it. So now that our configuration file is saved, the last step is to just tell Nginx to restart, so that way it knows where to look for our files and also to restart the web server. So I can do this just by typing sudo service Nginx reload. And everything should be good to go. So now if I head back over to the Dataplicity wormhole that we set up and just reload the page, we should now have access to our cat fancy website. So I'm just gonna reload the page real quick. And as you can see, a glorious repository of various cat pictures are now accessible at our hands. Now, if you wanted to do something a little more fancy, you could also redirect your own custom domain to the default one that's given to us through Dataplicity. And of course, you could also just swap out this site for something like your own custom blog page by editing some of the parameters we looked at earlier through the Nginx default configuration file. Now, in upcoming videos, I'm gonna go into a little more detail on how to set up more backend stuff through Nginx, so that way we can set up a more complex website. As you saw in today's demonstration, we were able to successfully deploy our own website and even configure a virtual private server that you can now remotely access from your smartphone thanks to Dataplicity. This of course has a lot of implications and use cases for things like controlling IoT devices, or even if you just want to get started with basic web hosting or remote administration on your Raspberry Pi. If you have suggestions for other videos or topics you want to see covered on this channel, please let us know in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lin. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.